It was really the only one we knew about, which made it seem unusual, very much like the Jupiter impact, and that, in fact, these are probably more common than we had really thought. The asteroid was originally calculated to be 200 feet in diameter and released 10 to 15 megatons of energy based on the devastation in the area. But Boslow now thinks the size was much smaller. When I did the simulation with a 15 megaton impactor, the fireball, the very hot gas that emerged from the explosion, descended all the way to the surface. That would have incinerated all the trees and created this zone of complete devastation that was not observed at Tunguska. The trees were not incinerated. Therefore, the mass would have had to have been less than, than people had previously thought. Boslow designed new simulations to show that the momentum effect of the air blast, not the size of the rock, caused the devastation. I modeled this as, a, uh, as an object coming in at a 35 degree angle, and I exploded it when it descended below about seven or eight miles above the surface. It comes in, explodes, but the jet of hot material continues to descend. So what you see is the momentum effect after the explosion. The momentum is the velocity that continues to carry the mass downward before it finally slows down and stops. Boslow's new simulations also account for the fact that the terrain was not flat, so the winds from the blast were amplified by the ridge lines. But the gust is stronger on the top of the ridge and, and just beyond the top of the ridge. That's where you would tend to have the most trees and the most damage. Boslow's new research may mean that finding smaller asteroids is more important than previously thought. One of the conclusions that results from this work is that smaller asteroids can create significant damage at the surface. It's not a matter of if, but when we'll be hit by another Tunguska object. It's estimated to happen once every 500 years. And with Earth being more populated today, such an impact could be deadly. Asteroid and comet impacts are not events of the past. They're ongoing, and one day could again profoundly alter life on Earth. Believe it or not, Earth takes a hit from soccer ball-sized space rocks every day. Most go unseen. But in 1992, amateur video caught a meteorite flash across the nighttime sky. It eventually crushed the back end of a parked car in suburban New York. The odds of being struck by small or even large meteorites are extremely low, but the potential harm one could cause keeps NASA on high alert. Congress mandated that NASA must detect over 90% of near-Earth objects over a half mile in diameter these rocks could strike the Earth with the energy greater than all the nuclear weapons on our planet today. The most potentially hazardous near-Earth asteroid to date is Apophis, which is the size of a large city block. This space rock will make a close pass near Earth on April 13, 2029. Apophis has a one in about 45,000 chance of impacting the Earth. That is cause for at least some concern. Even though the probabilities are very low, it's not all that big as asteroids go, but if it were to fall on a city, it would obliterate the city. It's still a minuscule probability, but it's not zero. I think a really good idea is to put a transponder on it that can be used to track it very accurately. Then we can know if it's a threat or not. Scientists are developing mitigating technologies to either destroy a near-Earth asteroid like Apophis or nudge it out of harm's way. But as much as asteroids and comets are life-threatening, they also could one day be life-saving. We also 
with the same technology have access to those asteroids for other purposes, such as mining them and retrieving materials to bring back to Earth. Planetary scientist John Lewis has spent a career devising methods for mining space for precious resources. Lewis says asteroids' proximity to Earth present an opportunity to harvest their vast metal, mineral, and water ice for our planet, as well as future space missions and habitats. I always envision the use of space resources to bring back to Earth. One of these is the extraction of water. The water can be used, of course, for life support. You can drink it. You can also generate electric power, stick electrodes in the water, electrolyze it into hydrogen and oxygen, and use the hydrogen and oxygen as rocket propellants for the return to Earth. Among the many valuable components in asteroids is iron nickel, as well as highly priced metals such as cobalt and platinum. These could be extracted to construct a variety of things on Earth. Lewis says engineers could build Earth-orbiting processing plants in space to carry on mining manufacturing as well as energy production. My concept is that a lot of these structural materials could be used in the process of putting up solar power satellites to produce unlimited quantities of cheap electricity very cleanly. So we produce this uh, power, beam it down to Earth. And landing on an asteroid is not complete science fiction. In 2001, the Near-Earth Asteroid Rendezvous mission, known as NEAR, became the first spacecraft to touch down on an asteroid named Eris, which was then 190 million miles from Earth. Well, we've had several successful missions to near-Earth asteroids in recent years, and the sense that these bodies are accessible, that we can easily go there, pick up samples and study them, Asteroids and comets have had a tumultuous relationship with Earth. They've been both creators and destroyers. One day, they may even be able to replenish our depleting resources. Although the odds of future deadly impacts are less than getting in a car accident or being hit by lightning, the threat still looms over our planet. Should we be worried about asteroids and comets impacting the Earth in the future? Well, let's just say that over the next thousand years, there might be some sort of an impact. The threat is not enough to make you go out and buy asteroid insurance, but it's probably something we should pay some attention to. We know that throughout history, the Earth has been bombarded by asteroids. There's absolutely no doubt that it will occur again in the future. The question is not whether we'll be struck in the future, but when and where.